I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. I cannot lead you into battle. I do not give you laws or administer justice but I can do something else. I can give my heart and my devotion to these old islands and to all the peoples of our brotherhood of nations. I have in sincerity pledged myself to your service, as so many of you are pledged to mine. Throughout all my life and with all my heart I shall strive to be worthy of your trust. It's all to do with the training, you can do a lot if you're properly trained. The lessons from the peace process are clear, whatever life throws at us, our individual responses will be all the stronger for working together and sharing the load. The upward course of a nation's history is due in the long run to the soundness of heart of its savage men and women. I myself prefer my New Zealand eggs for breakfast. Like all the best families, we have our share of eccentricities, of impetuous and wayward youngsters and of family disagreements. My husband has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years, and I owe him a debt greater than he would ever claim. To what greater inspiration and counsel can we turn than to the imperishable truth to be found in this treasure house? the Bible? No one who knew Diana will ever forget her. Millions of others who never met her, but felt they knew her, will remember her. Madam President, speaking here in Dublin Castle it is impossible to ignore the weight of history, as it was yesterday when you and I laid wreaths at the Garden of Remembrance. I have been aware all the time that my peoples, spread far and wide throughout every continent and ocean in the world, were united to support me in the task to which I have now been dedicated with such solemnity. What were once only hopes for the future have now come to pass, it is almost exactly 13 years since the overwhelming majority of people in Ireland and Northern Ireland voted in favor of the agreement signed on Good Friday 1998, paving the way for Northern Ireland to become the exciting and inspirational place that it is today. Grief is the price we pay for love. I know of no single formula for success. But over the years I have observed that some attributes of leadership are universal and are often about finding ways of encouraging people to combine their efforts, their talents, their insights, their enthusiasm and their inspiration to work together. I have to be seen to be believed. Therefore I am sure that this, my core nation, is not the symbol of a power and a splendor that are gone but a declaration of our hopes for the future, and for the years I may, by God's grace and mercy, be given to reign and serve you as your queen. At its heart, engineering is about using science to find creative, practical solutions. It is a noble profession. These wretched babies don't come until they are ready. I have behind me not only the splendid traditions and the annals of more than a thousand years but the living strength and majesty of the commonwealth and empire, of societies old and new, of lands and races different in history and origins but all, by God's will, united in spirit and in aim. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In good times and bad, she never lost her capacity to smile and laugh, nor to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. I admired and respected her, for her energy and commitment to others, and especially for her devotion to her two boys. 
We lost the American colonies because we lack the statesmanship to know the right time and the manner of yielding what is impossible to keep. To all those who have suffered as a consequence of our troubled past I extend my sincere thoughts and deep sympathy. With the benefit of historical hindsight we can all see things which we would wish had been done differently or not at all. In remembering the appalling suffering of war on both sides, we recognize how precious is the peace we have built in Europe since 1945. The British Constitution has always been puzzling and always will be. It is easy enough to define what the Commonwealth is not. Indeed this is quite a popular pastime. At Christmas, I am always struck by how the spirit of togetherness lies also at the heart of the Christmas story. A young mother and a dutiful father with their baby were joined by poor shepherds and visitors from afar. They came with their gifts to worship the Christ child. I hope that tomorrow we can all, wherever we are, join in expressing our grief at Diana's loss, and gratitude for her all too short life. It is a chance to show to the whole world the British nation united in grief and respect. The events that I have attended to mark my Diamond Jubilee have been a humbling experience. It has touched me deeply to see so many thousands of families, neighbors and friends celebrating together in such a happy atmosphere. For many, Christmas is also a time for coming together. But for others, service will come first. 